Welcome to your Monday Morning Roast. This is our 11th episode, the equivalent of gathering around the old water cooler coffee in hand, catching up with friends to see what went on with the weekend, and we're going to discuss a specific topic today in regard to Disney. Uh, if you have something to say on the topic, feel free to drop it in the threads. Uh, we may even ask you to join in the future, but today we have a special guest with us alongside my illustrious friends and cohorts, David Hutz and Bill Flavored. Bren Weiss and Eric Milch. Uh, shortly, we're going to have Ray May uh, joining us as well. So allow me to ask uh, Bill, uh, give me just uh, one sentence about your weekend. One sentence about my weekend. Um, I got to celebrate my niece and nephew's birthday. Their party was pushed off by three months or so. We had like a really small socially distanced get together to celebrate their birthdays. So that was a weekend. It's very nice. Social distance birthday. David, one one sentence at your weekend. I hung out with Alexander a ton this weekend and just had a That's black. one sentence. You're done. <laughs> he, he doesn't <laughs> again. I had two sentences. So stupid. Uh, okay, uh, Dink Jr. La Bebe and Merd. Okay. Carrying on. We'll translate that. Smoke that. Something about shit. I don't know what the rest is. The baby <laughs> and Merd. You said one smoke. sentence. I can smoke it, he says. Uh, Eric, one sentence about your, uh, about your weekend. Ton of work. Got to play golf. Done. Celebrated no. Parker's 25th birthday. Comma. Three sentences. Three Comma. sentences. <laughs> Great. One sentence. Not with one sentence, with three sentences. I will just say I did what I always do. So uh, I'm going to break. Movies. Uh, swim. Uh, yep, and uh, and swam, and uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so Gary May is going to be joining what us. I want to say it's appeared. Who? Did he just throw on the west side? Gary, yeah. you are, Gary, you are. Looks like he just he just Grecian formula is like soul patch there for the <laughs> podcast. Gary's Looks a lot darker than it did the other day. <laughs> Coloring that shit in? You're on mute, you're, you dummy. You're, yeah, you're starting on mute. Boot this guy goes around and speaks to people about technology. Doesn't even know how to unmute his camera. <laughs> I didn't want you to hear what I said, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Read, read, oh. My oh. read my oh. hair. Read my hair. I don't want to do either. I can't stop staring at that. <laughs> it looks like uh, <laughs> the Polish occupation is what your hair looks like. I don't want to do that. <laughs> my hair is covered. Like, like his Hitler mustache dropped one more time. Really? Exactly. <laughs> Hit on top of the head. <laughs> it's a transplant from, yeah. It, from, yeah. They grafted it, it from his butt. From the anus. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, so it's hard. Where I'm down here in Florida. It's hard to avoid the news of how bad the virus is. <laughs> you're, the emp you're the world epicenter, Joe. Yes, yes we are. <laughs> yeah, Congratulations. Number Way one. to go, Florida. What's your governor's name? <laughs> Ron DeSantis, he's an idiot. Yeah, he's, he's really done. Way to go, Ron. You're number one. He is the Jaws mayor of government <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> the so, beaches are open. Yeah, with that said, I mean, I don't think they ever closed, by the way. With that said, I don't think anything closed. <laughs> uh, Disney. Now, everybody here knows how I am just a drop-dead Disney fan. Uh, have lived and died by it. And they closed down right at the beginning in March of the pandemic, early on in the pandemic. And yet, for some reason, they reopened. And there's already countless pictures of people not following any of the social distancing guidelines or mask guidelines. So much so where, even though they opened up last Monday, or so a week, in, in just a week, they've already reissued new upgraded rules to make people to follow to get them to fall in line. So, uh, so just for instance, they said, if you're eating or drinking, you don't need to wear a mask. So people that are just hard-headed bastards are walking around buying themselves a drink and they just walk around with a drink in their hand all day so they don't have to wear a mask. Um, so Disney's put in rules. I mean, besides the fact that now, I know a huge organization like Disney should be able to solve 
the mask required social distancing stuff with the amount of money and resources they have. But you can't cure stupid. So they're making little things saying, if you're eating or drinking, you have to be standing still now. You have to be stationary. <laughs> you, know? you, have to be away from, you have to be social distancing away oh, from people. Man. You take off your mask then, but you can't walk and eat or walk and drink. Um, and there's just so many. So I will say, you all know how much I love Disney. Hell, I moved down to Florida partly because of Disney. So the the fact that I, uh, you guys know, I mean, I've read every single book about Disney's customer service beliefs, their philosophies. I've read the unofficial guide to Walt Disney twice, long before I moved down here, just so I knew how to best experience the parks. Um, I was an annual pass holder for years before we uh, quit that when we tired the kids out on it. So I'm a lover of Disney, but I've got to say, Disney, it looks like nothing short of a cheap money grab. Um, so, I mean, I'd love to hear, uh, I'll start with you, Eric. Talk to me about, uh, talk to me about your perception of how Disney is looking right now, how they, how they are as a company. And I, I don't know about you, but I own stock in Disney. So I, I mean, I'm a believer in the brand. You know, so talk to me. Yeah, I don't think it's... Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. For one, I think it's a mistake that they've opened so quickly. Uh, I think it's uh, Disney Hong Kong has already shut back down. Um, However, from a a company standpoint and a a fundamental standpoint, I don't know how much... I, I don't believe the shutting down of the parks is going to affect them as much as one might think their opportunity for consistent growth and revenue and uh, and and true fundamental performance is probably going to come from their new online services there when they launched disney plus they opened that up i believe subscriber growth was 50 times what they expected and so everything that they're doing is going to put through pressure obviously on even amazon studios even netflix yeah, and uh, you know, they're the obviously the library that they have to draw from is significant. So I think from a company fundamental standpoint, they're still gonna they're still poised to do well. Uh, you know, I'm I'm in your camp, Joe, as well. I you know I own some, but yeah, I, I still think I still think it's a, a strong company. Uh, but I, I just think the decision more is more of a, a moral issue that is just is misguided in my opinion. Did this show just become Mad Milch money? Yeah. Just the sound of no, I mean, here, so I think what Eric's saying is, listen, the company's got a lot of other resources to make the revenue other than opening the parks up and letting a bunch of people get a lot of other people sick. And in the middle of a pandemic, in what you said is the epicenter of the world of coronavirus, why do you need to do it now? It, it doesn't make much sense. Um, so, I mean, Brent, what are your thoughts? I mean, I see that you're you're not a fan of turkey legs for your screen. No, I'm not. Like, I'm not a fan of the parks either. Like, I, I, I personally, I like. I brought Maggie there. Maggie went down as a like a young kid. We went back to a couple parks a couple of years ago when we were all at uh, at the conference together. When we had all the kids at the hotels oh, yeah. a couple of years ago. So after that, Maggie, like, we hit a water park. Like the Disney water parks are badass. Like if you've got an older kid, they're great, right? So we did that. But walking around, like, you know, I mean, you go, like, I, we, Maggie and I walked around Magic Kingdom, and I kind of said to her, for, for us, it's like, once or twice you go, and, and she was at an age where she was, like, just coming out of public school, going into high school, it's like, yeah, this is my last kind of go around at the Magic Kingdom, right? It, it, I don't, I personally don't understand how people can go over and over again um, when it's not like a roller coaster park, like a Universal mm. Studios or something. Like, I, Canada's Wonderland, by, owned by Paramount, it's north of Toronto, and it's just coasters. So as a as an adolescent and as a teenager, yeah, you can go spend your summers there riding coasters and, and but fucking Disney's boring as shit. <laughs> like it's just like there's nothing to do there. There's all these like old rides from the '60s and you eat turkey legs and you, I like I don't know. Like you stand in the hot sun. The only thing that's cool about it is like the haunted mansion, right? Other than that, it's it's boring as fuck. So why do I want to go to something? Why do I want to go to something even more now that I already find is boring? Well, watch like it, you know what I mean, and and then and then be somewhere where like fucking nobody's 
nobody gives a shit down there, guys. I'm sorry. Mm. None of you give a shit about what's going on. And it's, I'm oh, sorry. No, no, I, mean, I know there, I know, but I know there's a lot of people down there that do give a shit. But honestly, like, if you're going to go into, like, of all places, Walt Disney or Disneyland in California and in Florida, and we'll t- I'll throw it to you, Gary, in a second. But you're going to go to two places where the numbers are spiking, clearly because people just stop giving a fuck. I'm, I'm going to go to an amusement park right now. I'm going to take my dollars and like spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to not only just maybe get myself and my family sick, but then go home and anyone else we come in contact with on the drive up or the drive down. I'm just going to just going to spread germs state over state. And I know your mom's probably watching and is probably saying like, all you have to do is breathe in coffee grounds and it'll fix it all and stop using 5G. Fuck you. Everyone's going to go down there and everyone's just going to fucking dose everybody else. Well, last week she was talking shit about, you know, all you have to do is smell coffee grounds and that cures cancer. Like fucking grow up, right? Like let's get into science here. I'm just done with Disney. Fuck Disney. Fuck all these resorts. Fuck them all. That's my that's my take. So, but I think yeah, that's an indictment against Florida, though. I mean, in all fairness, okay. Um, so the indictment California against California. Too. My brothers in San, my, like my youngest brother in San Diego County, when all this went down, nobody was wearing masks. Everybody on the street was hanging out, and be, and their and their reasoning was, it's not as bad where we are. Let's talk about California. It's bad every, how bad it's is bad it there? Everywhere. Yeah, Gary, how bad is it? <laughs> it was it bad out. before I escaped in March. Yeah. Are you not there right now? Are you in? Are you up in Idaho now? Like I've been all the time? with the kids, yeah, since March twenty first. How long have you been in your sports store? <laughs> <laughs> Never. Well, I just want to say one thing. For- He's on a bicycle right now, riding. Exactly. <laughs> his 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 zoom rate. background. He changed yeah. his Zoom background. He's actually. <laughs> I'm sweating just for Brent. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I did a did an eighty miler yesterday, so we'll see what I do today. Yeah, well, uh, it's funny because uh, Eric did an eighty two miler yesterday. Yeah, yeah, he just went for subs. Two, two, <laughs> two more. So, uh, so Gary, Disneyland, because you're a Southern California guy, uh, talk to me about like Disneyland, what's going on there, or just your your overall interpretation of Disney as a company in the parks. Well, <laughs> I think it's goofy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Get his ass out of here now. Me. Yeah, yeah. Can we bounce, can we bounce him now? Milch is the <laughs> only one that knew I did voices. I don't think anybody else knew. Yeah, think yeah. Oh, that, knew. that's not a voice? Oh, that is a voice. <laughs> We're trying All to right. That. Pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I agree part and parcel with what you said, Joe, as well as what Brent said and Eric's overall take. I just think in the scheme of things, I think the board was just thinking grand experiment. Let's see how it goes. Sure. I don't think it was logical at all. I mean, the, the more of an attraction your place is, doesn't matter if it's an airport or a, an amusement park or one of the most popular restaurants that has a line around the door normally pre COVID. I, I think that everybody knew kind of where things would go starting in February, March, wherever. Some people knew in December and January. Uh, I was in Australia in January in Sydney Airport on the way back on January 26th with a ghost town, January 26th. They're really close to Southeast Asia. And I started seeing that back in January. And it was really eerie to kind of see it roll out. Um, They were already shutting stuff down in Australia when I was leaving. So um, I think it's just a grand experiment. I don't think to Eric's point really that it's a dollar thing because travel is down so much. I think it's just the local people or state over state. It's domestic people. It's not people flying in from Europe or Asia or something like that. Uh, so why would they do it then other than money? Like I can't understand why they would open up Florida I, I or anything believe, other than dollars. I truly believe that it's a grand experiment. Political move. I think, I think the one thing you guys aren't taking into account is their entertainment unit is also shut down. So I think to a, a point, I think, yeah, like Disney Plus is great, but all this fresh new content that they have slated for production, they can't shoot because the studios are shut down. Yep. So and I don't know if that affects California or Florida more, but I got to think though that this is a matter of like, they need to get some cash in the bank because you got you to think of what Disney's burn rate is. It can't be like a, like a little bit. 
Um, no. When they're committing hundreds of millions of dollars to these different, um, it's not like millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to different projects and stuff like that. It's not like, like the airlines though. Uh, yeah, it's not like the airlines, but still, I mean, like you got to wonder if it's, they, they need to like trickle some money in just to get a, a cushion for what's going to happen next or if things continue. Like the, right, the but if they, no, as we don't know, I think the grand experiment is figuring out where people's push buttons are, the levers, how everything works. And ultimately, I mean, the same, the same response in Southern California is happening, AKA like Florida. Uh, and I think people are you know, doing a coin toss to figure out, you know, do we take our kids or not? It's open, it's summertime, they're home. You know, it, logic defies, you know, this is flying in the face of logic everywhere. Yeah. So. But when does this turn though? When does this turn in all of these visitors that go to these parks or people that hop on these flights, right? So Delta is like saying, Delta today came out and said, well, like, we're not gonna, we're gonna ask people who can't fly with a mask on um, to stay home, right? Don't buy tickets on our airline. We'd, we'd rather you not be on the plane. But Disney and the airlines have all these people traveling, right? And, and the, the numbskulls that are like, I have a condition. We've seen all the asthmatic people online who have major oxygen conditions and wearing masks and it's no problem, right? And, but when does this turn? Because everyone's like flipping a coin going, well, I'm going to do it. And, and there's the people out there that like, I'm just going to get my kids sick. So they build up the antibodies, blah, 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 blah. But when do all these people start turning around when they do get sick and someone gets really sick and then they start suing these places? Mm -hmm. No, it's... Because lots of, like to Bill's point, there's a burn rate. But what happens when, when, when people start suing these, these, these amusement parks and these airlines for getting them sick? It's going to happen. You are in a country that yeah. loves to sue each other. So well, why would California that? Is I, the I most still believe that. Place in the world. I still believe that they they open still for the almighty dollar. They still need to generate the revenue. I don't know. Yeah. Don't quote me on it. But I I, st I believe they're they're their cash on hand was something like $4 billion and that doesn't give them enough to still pay off their debt for this year. So they're, they're, they still may be in trouble with that. So who knows? You know, it, it, I'm sure it's motivated yeah, by money. Joe Drozen, Joe Drozen beat me to the punch because one half of me thinks for a company that lives by as many like good virtues, like I don't know if Walt Disney they do? would have, listen, you know, what if, <laughs> they do, they do out of your mind. Yeah, Joe. You just Joe's bought it. You're just you just drank the Kool-Aid yeah, for them. Yeah, and the, Joe, Joe, Joe's, so, Joe's, so Joe's so indoctrinated. He's, oh, here, yeah, 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 <laughs> remember I, when he had his wrist pad? Joe, yeah. customer experience, dollars. Okay, no, no, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, uh, for an organization that at least thought as Walt Disney as an individual, what I will say, uh, like thinking as a child, he himself would probably not have opened up the parks. And Joe Drozen uh, on our thread mentioned uh, it could just be to make sure that the cast members themselves, who very much live week to week, definitely needed, uh, you know, needed income. So they opened it up for those people. I don't know if that's the. So, I can't it, it, so those people are more important than the than the whole. No. No. I, don't, I don't get it. No, but it's no, like that this. doesn't okay, apply so at all. They got rid of all the internships that's as well. A tough deal, right? But in the end, your obstacle that be, that is is your path now so now right they don't have a job just like i don't have a job it's tough right you gotta mm -hmm. figure something else out they're talented there's something else out there but just so those people can have work uh people get to get sick it doesn't make any sense agreed agreed yeah listen you guys know i'm more you bastard for... bill yeah i'm more <laughs> that was joe's of, of this uh of this virus than than most and i'm at the heart of it you know, so even Bill and I, we're, we're flying uh, to a new client, uh, you know, far be it for us to, to land dealers during this pandemic. Uh, but we're going to a place and we're even flying the second leg together. And, and once we land, we still got a two hour drive. And he's like, well, we'll just wear masks in the car. And, and Dave, the only reason they did that was to double and triple their fee. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, right. the truth is like, I don't well. Like, I will be the first to admit I don't wear masks when I'm in a car, but I haven't had to ride with anybody else yet. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And so, you're in the worst, like, but you're in the worst state. So why would you do that to Bill? You're in Florida, and I know you guys have been isolating. But if you haven't been tested, you got to wear a mask. Yeah, you've been ramping back up too. It's, I mean, it's like, true. While it's country. like yeah, like if you haven't been tested though, and I know you, like I know I like on our text thread, you haven't been around anybody. Doesn't yeah. matter if you haven't been tested, you have to wear a mask in the car with. You. 
if Bill. the conversation and Bill has to wear a milk bag over his head for the whole drive. <laughs> if if the conversation becomes moral the obligation, grocery bag. none of us can can none of us can peer into the the boardroom conversations at, at Disney right now. Of course, I think if the conversation becomes a moral obligation, there's there's no way that any of these large entities that can attract thousands, if not hundreds of people on a daily basis, the conversation has to change. So unless there's some action B, some option B, it doesn't make sense why you would open operations in a large you know, place where you can jam thousands of people, you know, six feet apart, three feet apart, two feet apart with their yeah. pretzel, or their lollipop or their mm -hmm. 80 ounce Coke, you know? Well, I mean, I wanna just, this is totally anecdotal, but like uh, when we went to Disney last year and it was great, um, I'm not gonna lie, it was a great vacation, but my my oldest, I mean, his immune system is like freaking Wolverine. That kid never gets sick, ever. Yeah. He's missed exactly one day of school for being sick because he had an allergic reaction. So he got sicker than a dog at Disney. So, I mean, under the best circumstances, like, and, and we were just hand sanitizing, hey, wash your hands, wash your hands. Who's this the is food, you know, Bill? Pre COVID. Who's the food? <laughs> which, you know, you got all those different, uh, you know, handrails and all this stuff they're touching and they're, you know, itching their eyes and itching their nose. And um, I'm thinking under the best circumstances, we got, I ended up getting it too. We, had, we got the flu and pneumonia mm. yeah, from being at Disney. And, um, and so it was pretty nasty. And that's under the best circumstances because it's not just the domestic people, kind of to Brent's point, it's not just the regular you know, schmoes from the USA going there. But I mean, I'd say a full third of the people we were around were speaking Portuguese. They're from Brazil on their, on their summer holiday because we went during the winter. You know, so it's like you have people coming from other parts of the world intermixing as well. That, and, and this isn't against anybody being foreign, but there's things you get used to in your country like you become immune to certain things so a bug that may not be bothering you could very well bother somebody else and all these things are kind of mixing together down there and that's under the best circumstances so i can only imagine now what it's like where they have you know identified different permutations of covid you know what if they're you know people are bringing their version of covid there as well maybe you've got antibodies to one but not another so there's i mean it's a, obviously it's like gary said it's like a, a big experiment but do we want to be experimented on just so we can, you know, go, you know, enjoy ourselves for a week? Like, is it worth it? Well, it's like even Vanessa said on the on the thread, though. She said she has friends that work at Disney that didn't want to go back to work. And even there's a um, there's a piece of software that friends of mine are actually like bringing into Canada right now. It, it's called CrowdBlink, and it's um, it works with a thermal scanner, so people at the place of work get thermal scanned, and then the app does a bunch of questions, so they go, "You're clear to come in and work your shift." Right, mm -hmm. like some some place to work, but you got to think of a place like Disney that big. Like, what are the to, to Gary's point on the experiment? Like to all of these cast members that work there, the thousands of people that have got to come in and out of these parks. Like, what's interesting about that, and why I was thinking about what Vanessa Vanessa's commentary was, is we're watching what's happening with MLB and NBA and NHL, and like so, you know, and what happened up here was the federal government just said to the Toronto Blue Jays, "You are not." playing in Toronto you are not like because they were like oh we're just going to have our players come back and forth every three or four days across the border to play baseball in your town but they'll stay in the hotel and say quarantine the federal government said no you're not you'll figure out where to play in the states and you'll stay down there like we're not having people like our borders are closed right now so and that's just thinking about like the, the sports leagues are thinking about this and they're like this is the way we'll test people this is the way we'll do that has Disney come out yet to say like when our cast members are coming in for the day this is how we're checking the health and safety of the people that even just work here to that point. Like someone's handing you a big ass turkey leg without a glove on. And even though they like, they could be asymptomatic or whatever it is, or sneezed all over them earlier in the day. Cause they don't give a shit. Like how, what is like Disney hasn't come out with anything. I, as far as I know, that said, this is how we test our people. Have they? I don't know. No, but I, I don't know. I mean, I do know they're scanning the, uh, you know, the forehead. Damn it. Again, even Sorry, why we get Dave so popular, even driving into uh, Florida, when I was visiting a client in Georgia, uh, they pulled me over and stopped me and, you know, took my temperature. Even though I live here. They're... Rectal. Rectal. Yeah. 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 Rectal. <laughs> but for some reason, the guy just used his thumb. So, <laughs> so uh, regardless, uh, um, <laughs> regardless, uh, I do know some people are taking precautions, but look, the entire NBA is sending their teams down here 
to finish out the season in Central Florida, you know. Yeah. And the couple have contracted it already. They, they, oh, they yeah. couldn't, couldn't stand to be in quarantine, so they had to go serious? off. Really? Yeah. 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 You didn't see that? yeah. Oh, yeah. These guys, they're, they're, they're so certain that these players will just stay in their rooms and not do anything and not go out. And it's like, these guys are like, go fuck yourself. I'm making millions of dollars. I'll do what I want, right? right. Joe, they just moved the – they announced that they moved um, Watkins Glen NASCAR uh, race that's coming up. They canceled it up here. And they moved it to Daytona, <laughs> which is so, I, you know, it's, I think it's They're hilarious. You know, trying to wipe out the out. state. Our, our yeah. governor. We don't want the race fans up here. Well, they want to bring the Klan down to Florida where they belong. And yeah. then, uh, our, <laughs> and then our give them COVID. <laughs> will literally accept any single concert or event so long as it means tax dollars for the state. He'll accept everything short of like uh, a, a, uh, Black Lives Matter movement, great. I mean, he would accept anything. Just, just short of that. And you just got tickets um, to Michael Bublé, too. Who's Michael Bublé? Michael Bublé from Canada. He's the crooner. <laughs> make that drink, that new sparkling water. Yeah, mm-hmm. he has. A- I, imagine, I imagine amusement parks and kids, because I don't like coasters going back. I like experiences. Disney, every single ride is like an experience it takes you on a, a, a little bit of a journey where coasters are just woo, woo, woo. but i imagine canadian roller or a canadian amusement park really just being like uh, how to chop down wood and stuff and how to say sorry really well over and yeah. over like it's, what it's it not is. a small world it's just yeah. a lot of people bowing and apologizing you know? <laughs> it of actually course, it spins in the opposite direction there Got it. That's <laughs> like <right>. australia <laughs> So go outside and like someone's door handle. The small booth. But I think I think this is one thing that I, I look at Disney though is like okay, everybody sets it on this high pedestal. I, I that's more of why I'm more after Disney because everybody's like oh you know look at what Disney's doing oh and look at what Disney's doing and did you read the Disney book and you you want to believe in customer experience like your CX it's Disney and everybody points to Disney as being like this great. Uh, I read tower of, of everything yeah. uh, with all their billions of dollars. And I and go, you, And Look. you agreed with that. You had, so Bill had heard me celebrating Disney, putting it on a pedestal on how magical it is, you know, the most magical place on earth. And it took Bill to go there with his kids and to get to see, like he even said, uh, Bill told the story, but like his daughter wore a dress or whatever and every single person called her princess the entire day. And oh, she yeah, they get For an entire day. And that's the type of stuff where, in the industry we work in, we're really not known for customer experience. But if you do it every every week or every summer, like some people in the States do, like there's people, like Joe, you said, you have the passes. Like, if you go all the time, though, if you're there all the fucking time, then then that doesn't that wear off? It's like, you know, how many times does Bill need to be called princess? Hold on, do you know how to mute your fucking phone? <laughs> okay, here's since I switched like to princess right mode. Well, I got more. I, I got more headgear. It's, compu- exactly. it's my computer. It rings through my computer too. Stupid. So stupid. Stupid. Yeah, stupid. but if you but if you mute this, doesn't it mute to your laptop? Not his there. Mac. Not his Mac. Yeah, you got you got to hit the uh, do not disturb button there, upper right corner, Dave. When we, yeah. when we move here, unplug it and plug it back in, Dave. <laughs> just want I just want you guys to all witness how busy I am. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, whoever's watching no. this, all now that everybody, hey, now and I'm, I'm gonna plug Dave right now because Dave was just working in Wisconsin and it looked like a cool shoot. So all these people that are talking about all this digital retailing they're doing and all this online shit, hire fucking Hudson. He's the best guy in the business for it. You'll need more video. So stop you trying to sell now. all this stuff. I can you teach need way you more video. Simple. Yeah, Dave yeah, exactly. just sent me a Not, bunch of videos have, the other day. He doesn't even have to shoot it. Yeah, he doesn't even have to shoot it for you. He can just show you how to do it. So. Yeah, Dave, wake you up sent me a bunch dummies. of great examples. I don't know why people aren't hiring you more often. I mean, you got some great stuff that you His did. phone's blowing up. I'm an asshole. Yeah, well, that. He's an <laughs> asshole, but he's a talented asshole, so hire him. Very talented. Oh, hey, Joe, yeah, on he doesn't... point, though, interestingly enough, you, Facebook, or, I'm sorry, uh, Disney was another company that just stopped advertising on Facebook as well. Yeah, and what's interesting is they're they're labeling it as their stance on hate speech. You know, it could just be, hey, we don't want to spend the money. Yeah, you know, I hate well, Facebook. Listen, they are Facebook, and I didn't know Disney is the largest advertiser spend wise on Facebook. Number really? one, they were the biggest. It said wow. for the article I read. I think so, it just uh, goes to prove that you can't crisscross customer experience with company experience yeah and 
you know, just because somebody is on a pedestal because of training, execution. I mean, we, you know, one of our fave events in the industry had, you know, some of the top institute, you know, person at the event. Sound out your big words, Gary. What are you trying to say here, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> big words. I'm small words. I'm vertically impaired words. <laughs> it, Light roast. It medium down, roast. Medium roast. <laughs> whatever, whatever the perception is about how companies operate, you can't make their, you can't look into their executive decisions or their dollar decisions okay. or based on how well they execute an experience when you're in their facility. Yeah. It does not correlate. Right. And we're finding that out with a lot of companies, number one. Number two, being as how there's no book, there's no script, this is all brand new. COVID's brand new. Uh, I think, you know, and, and we're well, you know, we're well into whatever any, all of the experts on social media think we are, one, two, phase, whatever. It, it comes down to this. This is unscripted. And companies are going to show their real intention and the real purpose, and they're going to exhibit who they are. You yeah. know, that's the bottom line. Disney's not the worst. They're not the best. They're fitting in there with a lot of other companies right now. And the bottom line is, uh, if your stance is all about your staff or your guests, then you have to exhibit that in different ways. This is, this is a test. This is a huge test. I don't think it is scripted. That's a great point. So, I mean, yeah, but here, very good point. this is what I'm saying is for an organization like Disney that makes money on bringing people into their parks and not the only money they make, but they make money on bringing people to the parks, opening up the parks and risking people getting sick is a calculated risk given that you make money. For the right. people attending Disney, it is an Wait. unnecessary risk. It's not calculated. It's an unnecessary risk to even go. And we have friends that literally we've seen go to the parks and said, you know, post pictures of lines that are not social distance, that are people jacked up right next to each other. And, mm -hmm. but moreover, there's only a couple parks open. There, a lot of rides are closed down. There's things you can and cannot do. It's sort of taking the fun. Like out why of even do it? Other than, yeah, right. right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, as, as, as a person who used to go to the park, when we had annual passes, we would go every two weeks, at least once every two weeks, minimum. But it was different for us because when most people think about going to Disney, they think about spending thousands of dollars and you go down, you stay in a hotel, and you wake up at you know, the crack of, of the morning and you get to the park just as it opens and you try to jam pack in 14 straight hours from morning, noon, and night and you try to see the fireworks and all this and it, it wipes you out. The rule of thumb is, you need a vacation after returning from Disney. But when you live here, it's like, they, you know, my oldest would get back from school. We'd have him do his homework. We'd have an early dinner. We'd drive down. We'd get, we'd park and we'd take the monorail into the park. We're in the park by 6 p.m. And then you walk in and just at 6 p.m. is when all the people are pushing their kids out. Like the father, the, the father's pushing a cart and holding a kid, and the mother's like gritting her teeth looking at the husband. One kid is asleep in the stroller. The kid on his shoulder is screaming, crying, and they look like they're going to have a, you know, kill each other or divorce that moment. And everyone's leaving because it's 6.30. They can't put up with it anymore. We're walking in, and on the way in, you can just sort of uh, automatically order your fast pass and say, we'd be driving down and say, what three rides do you want to go on? Bang, bang, bang. And you walk in, and you say, hey, we can pick any five or six rides and we leave as the fireworks are happening. Kids fall asleep on the way, pick them up, put them in their beds, wake up, go to school the next day. It's really easy when you're 45 minutes away from the parks. It's really easy and fun to go to, to be able to experience that. As fun as it is, you couldn't pay me to go to that right now. And I love hey, Disney. You want, if you want a thrill ride, just get intubated. Yeah. You know, that's a fucking just, coin just flip get right put there. Into a coma. You want, Artificial you want a coma. Scary, you want a scary ride? Have yeah. someone fucking shove a tube down your throat and <laughs> hope to God you live through it. Yeah. You know, but like uh, a lot of people, you know, know I, I think mean, this quote, I think Trump's quote the other day when he was being interviewed by Wallace, like he's been, he's been right more than, probably more than anybody else. So everyone who's like making these calculated risks with these openings, like, you know, they're probably right. You know, Disney's been more right than anybody else with how they've run their business. They've been successful. They, you know, they, they probably thought the same thing. Hey, we've been pretty successful at this stuff. We've gone through worse. No, you probably haven't. 
So well, you're probably not right about this. That's a good point though, because like, again, when <clears throat> kind of going, and also kind of going back to, to Gary's point as well though, about like how much Kool-Aid of your own do you drink? You know, as yeah. a company, it's like the customer experience and the company almost need to be separated because maybe they're overconfident about what they can do. I mean, and, and that's, like I said, yeah. that's the part where I go to, okay, we look at Disney as an example. They're not infallible. They make mistakes too, you know? And so like me, I expect a little more of Disney because of that, but I think they're a little cocky. I think if you look at, um, was it Walt's granddaughter, who's like the activist investor? Uh, she's like the, the Carl Icahn of Disney or whatever. I mean, <laughs> she is like completely like incensed about all these different things that they're doing right now. And uh, they're not like listening to that. No. If, you look at, if you look at the business model too, you probably mm -hmm. have a, a dynamic internally that the guy who's running the parks division is probably pounding the you know, fist on the table saying, let's open. And I believe parks is only about 35% of the company. You still mm -hmm. have all these other divisions, you know, whatever, <laughs> consumer goods, entertainment, studio, you know, all that stuff, you know, and plus international. And that's, you know, that's a, another major segment of the company. So, yeah, I think that another key takeaway though is, you know, what can a company do to diversify, you know, right now and you know, pivot and, Look for other look for other yeah. you know revenue opportunities. Giving new situation, new problems requires new you know new solutions. To Eric, to your point, I think what would be really great uh, if you magnify that is which company or companies, especially publicly traded, are going to be willing to step up and say, "Hey, here's what we believe," you know, putting it out there publicly. This is the path forward both for investors, company well-being, et cetera, and the consumer, and putting out new types of business models and growing, growing that from that, you know, kind of be the positive model. No, oh, absolutely. I don't, Bill, I don't know if you saw it. Zoom announced a special partnership with Formula One Racing to yeah. allow, you know, to allow you know, in, in the pits to, you know, type of access. You know, that's the type of, you know, that's the type of outside. They've, they've done a great job. I mean, not to get off on a, a not Disney tangent, but uh, they, they've actually been running races without fans, which is crazy. It's the biggest sport in the world next to soccer. And they're running and they, Zoom meetings in the pits? Like how long? They must just be a lot extra, longer than with people. Extra Can you hear me? The, Can you guys fans. see me? <laughs> uh, they actually uh, do something really cool during this last race I watched. They have a big like green screen that comes across. And you can see fans like cheering on the drivers. Tony Robbins, like funny enough, did that same thing. He had this big virtual uh, event. And I saw these images, I think I sent you guys those images where it's like these huge screens all the way around him, and he's doing his thing, you know, uh, all on Zoom. Yeah. 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 Really class. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's just in his living room. That, those screens are set up in his it living might room. Be. It might be. I mean, listen, and, and not to give Tony Robbins credit, because I'm going to probably take some heat for defending Disney on some things and Tony Robbins, but Dave and I got to go to, you know, it was like Gary Vanderchuk, Robert Hershevec. Uh, you know, Tony Robbins, all this stuff. I be all of us speak at conferences, and I've met a lot. Not of, anymore, we don't. No, <laughs> I've met a lot of people and seen a lot of people that consider themselves motivational speakers. I've never seen a motivational speaker until I'd seen Tony Robbins. Yeah, like that guy, like Dave and I, because we're we're sensitive blokes. Yeah, Dave and I are literally like crying and hugging each other. I mean, it's a really, it's a really emotional. Almost Was he talking about you even got the, into the Empire? Show. Yeah. What's he talking about? Exactly. I was thinking this about so. Tony Robbins. It's interesting. Um, so a couple of years ago, um, I made a comment on his um, Instagram feed that I'd written a short screenplay about his Thanksgiving story. He's got the story that about his Thanksgiving story. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of people commenting on one random post. Well, he sent me a private Instagram message saying, this is beautiful. I can't wait to learn more. And so then for like a year or so, we had this ongoing back and forth conversation on Instagram. And then when my mom died a year ago, um, he had actually sent me a voice message on Instagram. Let's see if I can find it. Send me a voice message on Instagram. Uh, Your just voice probably me, full. Just, to, <laughs> just telling me, you know, like, like, you know, words of encouragement. And I thought, it's unbelievable a guy like that would, would even take the time. So drop I'll, a link. Drop a link though for the people who are watching this into that video because it's awesome. It's really a really good video. Okay. Not, not to plug Dave again. But, Thanks, man. <laughs> but this is a plug for Dave. No, but seriously, um, drop a link in that because I think it's a really awesome video. It's it's 
for people who normally watch the stuff that Dave and, and Joe and I make, like it's really funny. Like this is actually pretty serious. It's really good. I have really to good. say though, we're 42 minutes into this, Joe, and I've never heard Gary May talk less. <laughs> well, he's he hasn't dropped nearly as many names as Joe just did a second ago, which is just a took 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 my brother <laughs> away there for a second. Yeah, I was thinking though, I wanted I did want to ask Gary though. I had this question, and I was thinking about it all weekend, and it's been burning a hole in my brain. I Max Web is that because you couldn't register the domain Apple Google Internet or like what what was that all about? Uh, there's there's some reality to that. At when I started the company, September seventh, oh seven. Uh, I didn't want this small startup in Cupertino, California, have an issue with IMAX. Uh, yeah. And it yeah. was available, actually. The domain was available. Really? I added, I added web to the end of the company name I'd come up with, you know, interactive marketing and consulting services. People should know that's, that's the, you know, IMAX is actually an acronym. And the only reason web got added is it was an omnibus. We eat babies. <laughs> it was to go minus no. one B, but uh, I thought it was Joe Web. Yeah, was, <laughs> I thought it was uh, just about you know web lion memes. It's crazy. I've never heard IMAX Web and even remotely ever thought of the Apple company. Yeah, IMAX. so IMAX. Oh, makes sense though. Now I didn't. I didn't want to step on the product and the domain. IMAX was actually available. I added the web because everything we do is digital. So there you go. You know, Brent, that's the, that's the. I think, I, I think Apple, Google, internet.com would have been better though. <laughs> I should like, have been all over that. Fucking black hat SEM going on there or something. <laughs> Look how smart I am. Black hat wow. SEO. Come on. Oh, he, black company, he needs the company name to let people know what it is he does. And I still get that same question from people who've known me the entire time or known my company. It's like, what do you do? Dave's even looking for what I do. <laughs> Zinger right there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so literally imacs.com was available September 07, and I did not jump on it. It's amazing that Apple did not domain the crap out of their product. I couldn't afford it at the time. The iPhone had yeah, been released. It cost now. Apple four grand or something like that. Now, but, if you had uh, registered iPhone.com, though, at that time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. You could have quit. You could have quit working. Yeah, for those that don't know Gary, uh, Gary May is the answer to the question as what would happen if Lance Armstrong and Eddie Munster had a love child. <laughs> so, <laughs> medium roast again. <laughs> uh, so, uh, with that said, uh, I don't know the next time I will go to Disney, not because it matter what they did, but just because of the, the current climate of the virus. Um, but I look forward to the day where I do get to go because I do think uh, it is a really fun magical place. They do deliver what they claim to deliver when it comes to customer support. Now, I remember I was on another podcast where we were talking about Lung infections. Where, where uh, Elon Musk was talking about uh, opening up the plant to build Teslas and all this and I thought, you know, he's genius enough where if somebody wasn't going to be able to figure out how to do it safely, it would be somebody like Elon Musk with that. And so I also think if they're going to, if somebody like is going to figure out how to do something safely, it is going to be Disney. And yet what I'll say is given Elon Musk's other comments since then, I say, nope, he's not the right person. He's not doing it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And Disney opening up was not doing it for the right reasons. Here's I, how many, here's how many people are open for the right reasons, which is completely subjective. Grocery stores. Hey, get it delivered. Yeah. I mean, well, I, it's I, available I, to us. I but, my but I hear you. Look, I, I'm I've been in a state for four months, you know, because my kids are here. I, I'm in a state that, even if you watch case numbers and case load, the real numbers are hospitalizations, ventilators, beds, deaths. You know, those are the real barometers. Uh, unless we can start figuring out non-negatives, false positives. Um, the bottom line is this, you know, being in a place where it's relatively open and there's been a lot of good things that have come out of it. You, you watch how the government, you know, the different cities and government uh, react up here. The bottom line is this, there's, again, there's no script, there's no book. 
everybody has to kind of push the envelope, consumers and companies, to figure out. And we're all at risk to some degree. We're all at risk. We've had industry friends that have become positive, that have been very anti, you know, COVID. There are people who have been very incredibly careful that have been positive. One of my longest life friends, is three years younger than my dad, he's in his 70s, was one of the first intubation releases in the Santa Clarita Valley uh, near Magic Mountain, actually talking about roller coasters. Um, uh, about two months ago, uh, you know, Jim was, you know, got positive, was hospitalized, intubated, made it out. He's the first one out of the Lucky. hospital. It's awesome. You know, and yeah, thank goodness, because I love the guy. He's awesome. And, um, you know, I've known him since the 80s. Rode together, raced together, had a wheel building business together. You were only 30. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am older than you, Joe, yes. still. Eric was in his 50s then, so it's, uh, it's all relative. <laughs> Super old. I think I, am, I think I am actually the oldest on the call. No. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the bottom line is this. Nobody Eric. knows, and if we just get our, head, our heads around that, and figure out that the best thing is not up to each person and it's not up to an organization or government. The best thing is we don't know. So just act that way. Yeah. We don't know. That's yeah. It. But I think that's, I think that's, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to push back on that. It's not up to any government. Like we're, we're doing like Canada lined up federally and provincially all along on this. And then it, then it trickles saying, down to the people. No, because that's that's the that's the fundamental part of the problem. You guys down there are like, fuck this. This is my rights. This is my individualism that you're infringing upon. And up here, everyone was like, what's our government saying? What's our provincial government saying? What are our cities saying? We'll do that. People are walking up and down the streets here with fucking masks on. That are, you know, people are riding their bikes with masks on up here. Like I it's, totally it's, a, agree. It, it's a different collective because that's what that's what the difference is. We totally we agree. look at we look at it from a social science as this is our civic duty to protect the, ourselves and each other and our families. Down there, you're like, fuck you, you're infringing on me. Let, let, let's let I'll Gary do what I want. Point. Let's let him finish his point real quick. I, I don't I don't no. disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Brent's like, no, fuck you. Uh, I I don't disagree fundamentally, and I love it up there. Matter of fact, and and. Mm. One of the things I wanted to do this year, as I did last year in June, is go back to Italy, and that's not part of my choice now. This is this is Canada, though. It's not Italy. I agree. I've been up to Canada. The motto behind them has <laughs> I don't understand where you're going with that. No, I'm sorry, keep going, Gary. The area behind you, behind yeah. Brent, has you yeah. fooled. But that's not France. The the bottom the bottom line is, my point is, we're all going to find out after the fact, and the numbers prove out to your point, Brent, that. That that had whether it was Canada, Spain, Italy, France, which all shut down uh, and hardcore. The the bottom line is we will find out after we'll get the playbook about a year, year and a half, two years from now, mm. at a minimum. But you guys had the play. Everyone had the playbook, though. That's the thing. That's the that's the most fucking egregious thing about this is everyone had the fucking playbook because everyone was saying this years out and they keep planning for this. And, they, and the people, mm -hmm. the scientists and the doctors plan for this shit all the time. Everybody said, we had playbooks for this stuff. Every administration in every country, all of their medical ministries and their, their specialized people had these playbooks. Everyone had them. And, and, and yes, Gary, you're right. There's gonna be a ton of data that comes out post. That's, that's gonna be, that's this is how, yeah, and I, I, I completely agree with you there. But I think it, it's beholden to the fact that how your people inside the countries and the states react to what, to what people that are supposed to be leading are, are doing. Because here's the fact, our, our current premier is not someone I'm a big fan of, but he's done a fantastic job listening to his medical professionals. Every province lined up with federally along the government, like the uh, health minister of BC, she, she was on the ground floor with SARS here in Toronto. So she, she was like sort of the first person up here that started talking about this, but you listen to these people or the CDC and, and all these other places, they have this stuff. They, this is their job. This isn't like we, we wait for something to happen and then we figure it out. They're documenting this stuff for decades to go, if this shit goes down, this is what we should be doing. We were like Bill Belichick, we had the playbook and we didn't use yeah. it. Yeah. I think this is where like taking this back to, to Disney, I think this is where we look at things commercially. And I think where Disney could play a role in this is that because of all their money 
you know, they can develop ways to actually kind of help iron this stuff out. To, I mean, so I think there's a, there's a, there's a big difference here. Cause I, I, I hear what Brent's saying. I want to keep it back on topic though, too, at the same time. But I think we're, we're, the state's rights are a lot different than what they're provincially in Canada. I and mean, that's just thing what it boils down to. So I think we have mm. to, we tend to look more to the private sector as opposed to the public sector to get things because, you know, we just inherently don't trust governments. It's sort of part of our, our, uh, our DNA. DNA. So, um, so we, I think that's where big, big companies. I think that's a weak, I think that's a weak excuse. No, it, but, listen, you know, look. Information. There's people who do not have the educate, like who aren't educated enough to understand what is truth and what is false. And there's right. a lot of misinformation being shed to people that are making them think that people are working against them, that powers that be are working against them. So like a lot of these people that are, whether it's anti-masks, Brent said, we have the playbook. We know social distancing, we know this, we know hand sanitizing. Like three things that should be relatively simple that, that, uh, that Asian countries do almost on the daily anyway. Mm -hmm. And we literally only as a nation refused to abide by it. Mm -hmm. but, but to Bill's point, I guess to Bill's point, and I just, like Bill's point is saying, we look to the private sector more. Why, and, and, I, and we get it, right? Because we've seen the, admit, the current federal administration look to these corporations as well, right? There's been Rose Garden mm -hmm. pressers with like lots of leaders of all these industries. Why isn't someone, like why do we think, or Bill, why do you think someone like Disney with all the power it wields, why are why like to the point of where where yeah where the where the U.S. sort of men, mentality is like we'll go to the private sector first and have them figure it out. Why aren't these guys pushing then federally to do something it's, it's different? It's bureaucracy. It's a really Instead simple just opening answer. Up. It's a very simple answer. It's that Disney can just shove it through and do it. They have all the the means to do it. They have the resources to do it. They have a test bed to do it. They can. So I mean that's why I think we do. Like when you look at like for instance like nuclear energy. Okay, I mean it, it just hang on with me for a second, okay, is that the minute that the government wants to open a new plant, it's an automatic 10 years of red tape. Automatic. They can have all the funding, they can have the land, they can have great rock and roll, and then boom, 10 years. Because of all the bullshit, all the environmental impact studies, all these other things, and that's why they don't build these things anymore. They just quit. They're like, you know, F it. It's not worth it. And there's a lot of things like that. This is a big problem. I think when you look at the Scandinavian countries and how amazing they are, they got like fucking 8 million people to worry about. You know, we have, we're the third largest, most popular, or third most populous country in the world. It's a big problem. You know, it's not a little problem. So I mean, we have, uh, we have, a, it's a lot bigger issues to deal with here. We're also 30%, we're only 5%, 4 or 5% of the world's population, and we're 30% of the world's cases. And, yeah, it's, and it's crazy. Crazy. But if Disney wanted to go that last mile in terms of truly trying to do something to contribute to uh, any type of value towards the greater cause, you'd think that they would put in some type of contact tracing solution. So at least they yeah. had some data on the people. They could trace who, who, if and when people did get infected. If there well, was a fast like that that actually existed, and I'm sure there are. But the point is mm -hmm. they could put something in that to go to the next step. I think, well, like I said, I think there's a lot of people. In the end, I think uh, the, 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 the real population control anyway. So everyone's super glad, I think, that America is uh, the leading the country, leading the world in cases. No, I don't think people. And, and are, I, I don't I think people are super glad. America. No, I don't. I don't think people are happy about it. I think it's terrifying to people because, as Bill said, population is so big. You know, there's, we're a trade, you know, we're, we're a trade partner. We're across the border from each other. I'd like mm -hmm. to, like, you know, I can drive to Bill's house if I wanted to. I can drive to Eric's mm -hmm. place. I want to do that. I want to, you know I mean? I want to start traveling and I want to start working, you know, being able to go and, and do those things. But it's terrifying to know that such a massive population is just mm -hmm. where, in, in other countries, to, to Bill's point about these populations where, you know, in places like China, they just do like sort of like wartime lockdowns of like, you're off the streets. They've got people patrolling streets to keep people off of them and stuff. And you've got, you've got this, yeah, there's no centralization of, of mandates of what should happen and where down there, right? It's very, mm -hmm. and, and that's, I was saying to someone up here, I said, the difference down in the States is it, it can be right down to a county level right who mandates what and they just go hey it's over to you guys to figure it out like again I'm, I'm talking a bit out of school because i don't live down there but i i have heard that right it's not federally they can step away and go state can figure it out and then the state can step away right and go it's to the county to the town yeah. like 
So, you know, when you, when you make it that granular, it, it's kind of terrifying to watch because you, you look at it from across the board and you go, other than a vaccine coming, there's nothing that's going to fucking stop this runaway train that's happening down. It re- like, that's the way we see it, right? Well, if that was the case, then even, even locking down wouldn't stop it because somehow it still just exists. It would just come back. The genie's out of the bottle. So, but I, like I said, I think that uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a probably a lifelong companion to well, the human if, race. Is the, thing, if, if the average person transfers it to two point five people, so it's 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 much more than flu. Two point five. Now, had everybody stayed wearing masks, most businesses, a lot of businesses, stay closed down that aren't essential, and social distancing put in place, there'd be a lot less people compounding two point five, two point five, two point five over and over and over. So it'd be much more manageable had we probably just stayed locked down another until, until Listen, until, it, in, until we all start getting together again. Hmm. But, but only no, but still it, on average is 2.5 people. So I'm only getting together now, with Eric right? again if listen, I can wipe yeah, him well, down. That's the way it's going for now. So let's say it's all locked down, right? Which, I, which is great, right? And I didn't even mind being in the lockdown with the family and all that stuff. And then it levels out. And then you start going out again, and then there it happens again. I mean, yeah. it's a lifelong companion. Period. Yes, it's going to be here all. The one thing that one it's like thing herpes. That it's like in, herpes. You know, like once contact tracing uh, comes into play, and, and Eric and I are uh, interesting enough, uh, been talking about some stuff. But uh, but once contact tracing and and social distancing technology starts becoming more readily available, it would allow us as a nation, yeah. as a world. To control a lot of things, a lot Fucking of things. Face, yeah. Facebook and Instagram are contact tracing right now. Look at all the people we know that are in, like in our feeds every day with like different groups of people. Nobody's got masks on. Everyone's hanging out. Like if if they can't already figure out that they already have live contact tracing going on right now, but of course but, those people. But but that. again, this this is something where the private sector could could work. Like I said, I think the minute the government tells us to download an app to make our phone buzz, that we could have. I mean, we could do it. People are like. Fuck that. I don't want the government tracking me by God. You know what I mean? Like they're not going to do that. But if a company like Disney said has it in their app and they test it out, that's what I'm saying. Like I look to these companies to go, look, we have a population in our parks. It's what like 50,000 people or something insane on a given day across the board. It's something they can do through the Disney app and actually see if it works. But it doesn't so, even I mean, you have to have contact tracing all type of stuff, it. but I mean, like, and this is, think- this is the difference. <laughs> So, Bill, do you think adoption would be better than everybody that just got it on their phones or didn't do the latest update because it was in the app? Do you think that Disney or, you know, whatever no. entity makes Yeah, but they, they have a proximity sensor they could put in the app. I mean, everybody downloads the Disney app when they get there. They can use near-field communication. Is that legal for a private buzz. sector, for a private business to even do? No, but people opt into it, though. That's what I'm saying, Dave, is that people just automatically opt into it. They're like, oh, I got extended features. I can check in teasing, with my phone, my room, and all that stuff. I mean, get updated automatically. Your TOUs get updated automatically. So look, Everybody has the magic band. Yes. They know where you're at at all times anyway. So they're, you know, if there's technology that allow you to trace back, and let's say you go to Disney, and all of a sudden – one or two people get confirmed the virus. If Disney was aware of it, they could trace back to see who was within six feet of this. Yeah. How much time do they spend around this person, and only alert those people, those attendees that didn't. Uh, right. or, I mean, that or only alert the attendees that were within close proximity to that person. Like Listen, Disney would never do that, and here's why: because in the end, it still is about that money. Yeah. That's they never. Mean, they have a choice. You can say, "Oh fuck!" Yeah. Now they know. <laughs> and they're not going to come spending money because they know there's people here that have COVID. So mm-hmm. what, are they going to have COVID positive days, COVID negative days? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, it's a great Wednesday point, Friday. I mean, <laughs> down here in Florida, it would be full both days. <laughs> yeah. but, I, but again, that's why I look at the private sector and go, look, like, it's stuff that people opt into. People opt into Facebook spying every day. You know, we, we opt into these things and we're somehow okay with it. But when it comes to the government doing then it's like, oh, shit, Snowden. Snowden. Everybody's you know, so, contrary. Yeah, so... Listen, I, I, I don't trust the government, mostly. I gotta bounce, guys. I'll uh, see you. Uh, you know. Okay, bye, Jarek. Bye, Jarek. Bye, Jarek.